One of Lumi Fusion's new major features is the ability to edit multi-cam footage. Now I've set up three cameras, one there, one there, and one all the way over there. And I'm gonna see just how easy it is to edit the multi-cam footage within Lumi Fusion. And before you start, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got the most up-to-date version of Lumi Fusion installed on your device. I'm using it here on a MacBook Air, but you may wanna use it on your another Mac or your iPad or an iPhone. And then once you've done that, you're gonna also wanna make sure that you purchase the Multicam Studio add-on, which if you haven't and don't know where to find that, you can find that in the bottom right-hand corner in the settings. And if you go to add-ons here, and as you can see, I've already purchased the Multicam Studio, so it's available for me within the purchase section. And if you haven't already, then it will be available for purchase here for that one-off cost. Now I like to import my footage into LumaFusion before I create my project. So as you can see here, I have my three clips already imported into LumaFusion. So I'm just going to create a project. And now we have our timeline. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to create that multi-cam clip is add a clip here. And if you have purchased the multi-cam option, then you'll have this multi-cam container right here. So we're gonna click onto that and that creates this. So by default, it adds about a minute of the multi-cam clip onto your timeline. And as you can see above it, it says synchronizer and switcher. Now what we want to do is we want to click on synchronizer. So this gives you the ability to add up to six different clips for your multicam sequence. And then you can also choose here to have your main audio source. So I want to use my audio source, keeping it the same for all the clips. So my one main audio source is this clip that I filmed from my camera. So that is this one here. So I'm gonna drag that down onto here. So now this becomes the master audio for the whole of the clip. And then I'm going to drag this clip down to number one. So as you can see that. And then this second clip down onto number two. And this third clip down onto number three. As I've chosen clip number one's audio to be the master audio, it will bypass the audio on, on these other clips here. So if I was to delete this, as you can see here, where these were muted audio before, every time I use clip number one, clip number two, or clip number three within the multicam, it will have their audio as the source at the time which I don't want because the audio levels will be different for each of the clips. So if I have my one master audio, then it will sound the same for all of the clips. So I'm just going to put the audio back from clip number one back into that. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to sync all of the clips and the audio together. As you can see, it's opting me to press this press to sync button. So when you do that, you can either do it automatically. I find that the automatic option is really quick and easy, but you can also do it by audio, by time code, and you can also do it manually. But in this case, we're just gonna do it automatically. And as you can see there, it has synced all of the clips, and we can tell they're all synced because the waveforms of the audio for each clip are in exactly the same place because I recorded them at exactly the same time spoke the exact same words for each of the three different cameras. So they're all gonna have the same waveforms. Now that we've got all the clips synced together, I'm gonna to wanna to cut the clip so it's a little bit more concise. As you can see here, there is a lot of blank space before I actually start talking at this point. So I'm gonna to wanna to cut it here. But I can only do that back in the main timeline. So I'm gonna unclose it. I'm gonna scrub to the part of where I just began before I start talking, which is about there. And I wanna cut that. And I'm going to delete that section. And I might go to the end as well. And I'm gonna cut that there. So we've got 57 seconds of me talking to each camera. And at the moment, as you can see, it's only selected on camera number one. So what we wanna do now is we wanna go back into the multicam option, and now we wanna go into switcher. And this will allow us to choose between cameras one, two, and three, or up to six, depending on how many clips that you've got within 
the multicam synchronizer. So within the switcher, we've got all three clips together. And if we were to just run it on as normal, it's just showing camera number one at the moment. But what we want to do, if you want to switch between whichever camera I'm looking at at the time. So we might just want to play it and then... So this is going to be my test footage where I look at one camera and then I switch to another camera. So as you can see, I have switched to look at another camera, which is camera number three. So I might want to just scroll it back a little bit and just see that exact point where I turn. And so I will have it about there. And this is how simple the multicam switching actually is. I can press the camera that I want to change it to simply like that. As you can see now this timeline changes and now for the rest of the clip until I change it again it will just be on camera number three. So if I play it through again another camera up there and then I'm just going to switch to another camera. Down. So I've switched again so I'm going to look for that point of where I changed so there and then I'm going to press this center camera number two. Now if we just scrub back to the start so this is going to be my test footage where I look at one camera and then I switch to another camera up there and then I'm just going to switch to another camera down there just to see how easy it is just to flick backwards and forwards between cameras. And I've switched again so I'm just going to find that point of where I've changed which is about there. I usually do it by looking at where my eyes are going. So I'm pressing video number one. And now you can just do it by just scrubbing. It just depends how quickly you are. So I want camera number two. Camera number three. Back to number two again. As I said, I've got a lot of cues of when I naturally seem to do it. I seem to look up at the camera first and then I can just switch it nice and easily. So on this screen here, this is what your video will play as, and then that reflects in what is being shown on the timeline here. So if we play it from the start again. So this is gonna be my test footage where I look at one camera, and then I switch to another camera up there, and then I'm just gonna to switch to another camera down there, just to see how easy it is just to flick backwards and forwards between cameras one, two, three, back down to two again, and then I'm gonna keep talking at number one, then I'm gonna switch back to number two. And if you do choose to do it too early, so like that's probably a little bit too early here, you can either press undo, or you can go back a little bit and then press it in again, and then it will just fill in that gap there. Back to number two, then number one, so let me just finish cutting up the rest of this sequence between my camera one, two, and three, and then I'll show you what it looks like at the end before we move on to the next step. So I've now cut the whole sequence, so it's got the correct camera that I'm looking at throughout the 57 seconds of this footage. So let's have a look how that looks. So this is gonna be my test footage where I look at one camera, and then I switch to another camera up there. And then I'm just going to switch to another camera down there just to see how easy it is just to flick backwards and forwards between cameras one, two, three, back down to two again. And then I'm going to keep talking at number one, then I'm going to switch back to number two, then number one, and then I'm going to go right up to number three because I keep putting my hands up there to number three because it is all the way up there. And then go back to number one again and then switch to number two to number three. Back to number one, number two, back to number one, and number three up there again. So I'm gonna try and film for about a minute just to see how easy it is to switch on number three to number one to number two, and then finish off with number one talking head like this. So that is as easy it is to do the multicam cutting and selecting of the clips. But one is if you want to color correct each different clip. Now, because you've cut it up, does that mean that you've got to do each individual cut up section separately? No, that doesn't. If we go back into the synchronizer, if we scroll right to the start, if we now treat 
the synchronizer as the normal timeline. If we double click on this clip, so if I want to add a LUT, I know that I filmed this in picture profile three on my Sony ZV-10. So I think for this, I think I use Filmic D-flat. So if I do that, it'll bring out the colors of my skin a little bit, with saturation. So now, if I go back out of this, it will affect this whole clip on this timeline. And it doesn't matter whether it's been cut up or anything like that. Every time you select clip number one in the switcher, anything you've chosen to do in the synchronizer is gonna be affected by whatever changes you've made here. So you don't have to do each individual cut section, you can just apply it to the whole clip and it, it will affect the whole clip just like that. So once you've made any changes to the color, to the sound or anything like that, or any fine adjustments that you want to make, you can do whatever you want and just use this compound clip that you've made just like any other clip on your timeline. So this is gonna be my test footage where I look at one camera and then I switch to another camera up there. And then I'm just gonna to switch to another camera down there just to see how easy it is just to flick backwards and forwards between cameras one, two, three, back down to two again. And then I'm gonna keep talking at number one Then I'm gonna switch back to number two, then number one, and then I'm gonna go right up to number three because I keep putting my hands up there to number three because it is all the way up there. And then go back to number one again and then switch to number two, to number three, back to number one, number two, back to number one, and number three up there again. So I'm gonna try and film for about a minute just to see how easy it is to switch on number three to number one to number two, and then finish off with number one talking head like this. And that's how you use the new Multicam Studio feature in LumaFusion. How would you use this feature in LumaFusion? Just let me know in the comments below. So that's just how easy it is to edit multicam footage in LumaFusion. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.